You're listening to the Rock Women Podcast, where the vision is to be doctrinally sound, emotionally strong, rooted in the Word, and serving others. Ladies, welcome back to the Rock Women Podcast. We are so glad that you've tuned back in for this second episode on worship. We're doing a six-part series on worship. We started last week on this idea of what is worship. We went all the way back to Genesis my favorite book, I think mm. it, it wasn't for a long time, but when mm. you dig in, <laughs> yeah, a lot of our answers really come. right just come right from Genesis. And so we went there to see who God is, how he mm. made us, he made us in his image and he made us to worship, to represent him and to glorify him on the earth. Lisa, have you been enjoying these episodes on yes, worship? Yes. And as we had uh, referenced in our last podcast that you and I have been really having these discussions for a very long time and seeing how uh, our discussions have continued to grow and grow and we've seen changes and we've been so excited about those changes. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this series that we're doing. It's so good. And we even started setting this idea up for this podcast today on corporate worship, probably three episodes ago. And ladies, that episode is called Less is More. And if you have not mm. listened to that, we really encourage you to go back. We even had Pastor Kirk, our senior pastor here at the Rock Church on to talk about this idea in light of our church and our worship services. Mm -hmm. And so when we are talking about corporate worship, probably many people are thinking, oh, worship, we're talking about music. Mm. But that is actually not the case today. And we did this on purpose, ladies. We wanted to make sure that we know that when we talk about corporate worship, we are not just talking about the music. As believers, when we come together and we gather, those worship services mm -hmm. from beginning to end are designed for us to worship together corporately. In our lives, we do this from the time we wake up to the time we go to sleep, that we're doing that personally. But when we come together, these services are designed, mm. um, biblically based, right. right, to worship the Lord. And so we are talking today about the corporate gathering. And so when we were talking about less is more as Christians, we said that we live an individual and personal life of worship. But we also have, like I said, this corporate mm -hmm. function of worship and with simplicity in mind, because we talked in Less Is More about, let's come back to the basics. What are we talking about here? How was the church built? What are the purposes? Mm -hmm. So when we, with this simplicity in mind as Christians, we have been called into the church, into this gathering, not just as individuals living this out by ourselves, but we have been called into the church. And so Ecclesia is the church, mm -hmm. those called out by God from slavery to sin into faith in Jesus Christ by mm -hmm. the blood of Christ. Lisa, is there anything that you want to touch on in light of less is more with our services? I was just thinking about the term worship services when you were talking. And when I was raised, my dad being a pastor, um, I mean, no, wait, when I was young in the seventies and eighties, we would, I would always hear our church services. Um, they were referenced by saying worship services. And I think somehow that changed. And I don't know if it's been the last couple of decades because of the quote unquote worship movement. Um, and when I say that I'm talking about music, where we've taken that term worship and not said worship service, but now we're saying worship the worship part of the service is just the singing, but that's not how it's always been. And so it's exciting to me to think, okay, we're going to actually get back to what it really means, yes. not to what it's become because of some sort of a, a movement that's become popular and that has had some positive things. Um, and we're going to be talking about that in the next few weeks, but I love the thought of worship. And so moving on to where we talk about um, what is corporate when talking about Christian disciplines yes. and is it necessary? So when we think about uh, those Christian disciplines, reading the scriptures, reading the scriptures aloud, praying aloud, hearing the word be preached aloud, being able to give, singing to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, encouraging. Those are those Christian disciplines that need to be done corporately that, that you cannot replace that in any way. Right. We just can't. 
Lisa, can I read this? Because you're you're basically saying this definition. I just kind of want to put it in this little tight box. Yes. I had found this definition and you're just talking about it. So I just want to kind of add it, it right yeah. here. Um, randomly found this on like LinkedIn. Yeah. Great. <laughs> and then I read it. I was like, oh my goodness, this is right. And so it's we're good. just going to use it. Um, and he said, corporate worship is the proper response of a gathered church to the person of the triune God and to his past, present and future works, especially Especially as they pertain to reigning and redemption, this response requires an accurate understanding of God's greatness and goodness informed by scripture. I just am pausing mm-hmm. there on purpose, yes. informed by scripture and is characterized by an earnest attitude of awe, devotion, confidence and submission that results in obedience and service. And what you're saying here, Lisa, the key elements Mm -hmm. is not just music here, are the key elements of corporate worship, public prayers, vocal singing and instrument music, public testimonies, financial contributions, public scripture reading, expositional preaching, observing the ordinances, which are baptism and the Lord's table, confessing faults and words of spiritual encouragement. And he got this list from the Bible. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> so biblically based. And so when we say the word corporate, right, Lisa, mm. as Christians, our life, our personal life and walk with the Lord cannot be substituted by the corporate Mm-mm. gathering. We have to mm-hmm. have these personal disciplines of reading the word, of prayer, mm-hmm. of having a relationship with the Lord from um, Monday through Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. But then there is also this corporate gathering and we cannot get personally in our personal walk what we should be getting corporately when we come together. And so when we say corporate, we're saying, let's come together and do those things that we Mm -hmm. do in our lives already. We're prepared. We're ready to come together now and we come together. And so that is where we get this idea of corporate worship. And Lisa, can you read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25? Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. And this right here, as we've been talking and as you read the corporate worship definition that you gave, um, all I could think of was we need to do the opposite of what we did during COVID. Yeah. Remember how we felt when we were not with other believers that we had to do things remotely and we watched online and thank God for online, but it doesn't replace the corporate gathering. And just knowing that we have to do opposite of that, we've got to meet together. And it is just that response of what we've already been doing through the week. Right. I remember too, like during COVID when we didn't meet together it was devastating. Mm. But I also remember after a few weeks, there became this temptation to be comfortable yeah. in it. Like, well, okay, so I don't actually yeah. have to get ready. I can just sit on my couch. I can just watch from here. I don't have to be any kind of way with anybody because mm-hmm. I'm just sitting here on the couch. And we needed this reminder don't neglect meeting together, yeah. right? Yeah. We need to do the opposite of I what know. we did then. Totally, totally. So Lisa, how should I enter into corporate worship? Because we have a responsibility, right? So we're talking again about this corporate worship gathering of the church in terms of praying together, in terms of listening in public scripture reading and preaching and song. But do I Mm. have a responsibility when I enter into a corporate setting of worship. And what is that, Lisa? So we have to remember that we, when we are, we're responding to God's calling. And so I'm going to read a a passage out of the book, True Worshippers. We've referenced this before by Bob Coughlin, and it's, it's just wonderful. So I'm just going to read a portion of this. And it says, Jesus is God's ultimate statement that he would provide a way for us to worship him, not only in this life, but for all of eternity, where our offerings are tainted with self-reliance and self-exaltation. Jesus emptied himself to bring glory to his father on our behalf. Jesus's perfect life, substitutionary death on the cross, physical resurrection and glorious ascension assure once and for all that those who trust in him can be numbered among the worshipers of God. And that's what I want to just camp on. 
when we respond to God's calling for us to worship him, we literally are making the choice to be numbered among the worshipers of God. It's not just Lisa's going to worship God privately. And that's wonderful when I worship God through the week, when I'm reading the Bible and I just meditate on a word and I'm thanking God in my heart, Lord, thank you for life and peace. Thank you for your work on the cross. Thank you for salvation. Okay. That I'm worshiping God privately, but I need to remember that it's more than about me. And that if I want to be numbered among the worshipers of God, it's a response that I have to take. So he calls us first. We don't ever, we, we're never the ones to initiate this. And so this is something that honestly, in my mind growing up, that was never what I thought. And I, I, I just always, it always was man's um, decision. And it is both, right? It's both and. God calls, God saves, but we have a responsibility to respond. We have to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. He doesn't make us do anything. But it all begins with him, just like in Genesis, in the beginning, God. So in the beginning of worship, it's God. And if I want to be numbered among the thousands, the, among, we can't even number the, the worshipers, but if I'm going to be numbered among them, it's my response to his drawing. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I had never really thought of. It was always, well, I'm just going to decide that I'm worshiping today. When there's truth there. But I'm going to decide because he's already called me to worship. And when I decide, I'm going to be numbered among the worshipers of God. Right. So it's, it's like, I don't, I, to me, that is, you just got to stop and say, you know, it's, it, it's a decision that I make and I want to be numbered among the worshipers of God. And so coming together corporately, that's part of this. That's my responsibility. I'm going to bring everything that I am doing through the week and I'm going to not worship in vain when I'm worshiping humbly before the throne of God. I come humbly and I want to represent um, the Lord well and realizing that I am a worshiper of God, that I'm numbered among the saints. That's amazing. It reminds me um, of Genesis um, where it says throughout and God spoke. And this is probably not the best way to explain this, but it's like he started the conversation. Mm. He spoke us into being. Yeah. And when we're worshiping, we are responding to that. Mm -hmm. I love that that worship yes. begins with him. And we do have a response, right? We are created to, like we said in the first podcast, Lisa, the last one, we are created to represent and glorify God on the earth. And that should be our focus mm -hmm. when we come in to corporate worship. When we come to church, it shouldn't be, are they, is the worship team representing and glorifying God? Are the greeters representing mm -hmm. and um, glorifying God? Is the pastor doing that? It should be, am I? Right. Because we do mm -hmm. have a responsibility. Am I representing mm -hmm. and glorifying God? And if worship is our response to the true revelation that we have good. God, um, we should come ready to respond biblically and wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. And I remember, Lisa, that um, when I was sort of questioning this idea of uh, corporate worship, especially in terms mm -hmm. of uh, music, it was, what is my response, mm -hmm. right? And I remember, um, because one of my confusions, and I know that we'll, we'll jump into this, is this idea of emotionalism. And so it almost made me want to pull back. Mm -hmm. And so... But I needed to be reminded that the Lord deserved 100% of me wholeheartedly. Mm. And it's not dependent on anything that's going on around me. It is dependent on God. Mm -hmm. Like you are saying that he is the beginning of that. So we don't wait to see um, if we love the song set, mm. <laughs> if the sermon is exactly what we're hoping for, or if we feel compelled to give. Remember, we mm -hmm. said... Giving is a part of that corporate worship. We come ready to respond biblically, right? Um, and and I do think that a lot of times that we forget that we mm -hmm. we come in we're like what's going to happen today in church because we are consumers by nature. Yes, right. So we go to church, and even when we're on a team, 
like whatever team that you're serving on, of course we want when we're on a team to like what we're doing. And so speaking of the music team, um, we're going to, we want to like the songs that we sing, but in all actuality, everyone has different tastes. And so we have to find within the dislike of a song, what can I do to change my heart so that I am worshiping God, even while I don't like necessarily this task, because we don't like to do everything that we do. I don't like to wash dishes necessarily, but if I want to do it as unto the Lord, Colossians 3.23, I want to do it with all of my heart. That's worshiping God. Right. So it's that same way when we come to church. If I don't like everything, I'm not going to, I'm not going to every week. Right. And the church has a responsibility, right, to set up our services biblically, Mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that our services are glorifying God. But every single Christian who walks through these doors also has a responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And we cannot forget that responsibility. So, Lisa, is every corporate worship setting biblical? And where are we seeing that it's not? Now, you're talking about over, like, when you're saying that, explain that a little bit. Yeah. So I'm looking at culture today. Well, clearly, goodness gracious, all you have to do is be on Instagram and see some of the reels of some of the churches. And I think that's actually not a church. (laughs) So, which is, I think it's not biblical. We need to be saying those things. We need to say, and I'm not saying like, oh, I didn't like that. So that's not a church. No. But the church is based on a true revelation Mm -hmm. of God, which is based on the Bible, if it is not biblical, Mm -hmm. if it is not a biblical foundation for that church, it is not a church. Right. Right. When, when things are based on entertainment, and again, we talked, Kirk talked about this in the podcast, uh, less is more that you've referenced, which again, we need to listen to that again, uh, if you haven't ladies, but um, the entertainment piece, it's a very tricky one. Because I can see where it could be beneficial in some areas. But if you have a church service where you are, that is part of the DNA of that service that you have to entertain a certain amount of time. We're seeing this in our culture now where the Bible is watered down and it's it's kind of like the necessary evil because a church is supposed to have a Bible. And so some of these churches that you see and there they have thousands of people going and actually Um, There was a quote that Jay had shared in our central meeting, actually, just recently. And I wish I had written that down, but he was talking about that. Um, It's just, it's interesting to me to see how in our culture, the church is reflecting the culture rather than the culture. The culture should reflect the church. We are a reflection of the of the culture in so many ways. And that has, that's really yours and mine. That's been our heart cry for years. Yes. Really covid to now. Right. Um, and I believe God's been doing this in us and obviously in our pastors. Like it's, it's just yeah. been a sovereign work of God that we've seen God moving in our local body. So go on. What were you going to say? I just wanted to um, say a, a couple of things. I wanted to go back to the less is more podcast just a little bit and talk about that. There are purposes for the church, mm-hmm. you know, cause I want us to keep that picture in mind. Cause we're saying it's not all the church, right? Okay. So what is the purpose of the church? And so our worship services should be number one. And again, we said this in the less is more podcast. Number one, they should be exalting God. Mm-hmm. Every element of our worship service should be based biblically. Mm-hmm. Right. And we should be exalting God we should be edifying believers and we should be evangelizing the lost and all of that built on Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. And have that biblical precedence throughout. Uh, Lisa. So we're kind of getting there a little <laughs> bit right now. And I know that in the next couple episodes, we're really going to jump into this idea of music. Mm-hmm. And so, and because that has been the, really our topic yeah. <laughs> for so long, I wanted to just sort of broach that subject a little bit right now of how do we then approach the music portion of mm-hmm. our worship services. And I just wanted to start by reading these first couple paragraphs, and then I was mm-hmm. hoping you'd just go for it. Um, but So this book is called Worship Matters by Bob Coughlin. And really listening to this book was one of the things that um, helped refocus me Mm. (laughs) when it came to corporate worship. And these two paragraphs specifically really helped me. It says, some Christians repress their emotions as they sing. They fear feeling anything too strongly 
and think maturity means holding back. But the problem is emotionalism, not emotions. Emotionalism pursues feelings as an end in themselves. And so Mm -hmm. we can, you know, our, our music can be designed, it is designed a lot of times to make us feel certain things and right. to kind of move with that. And I, I did feel myself rebelling against it to the point that I didn't even know how to give emotion during mm-hmm. worship services I, or during the music portion of the worship services. I don't know if that makes sense, but I did sort yeah. of mm-hmm. see myself holding back. Well, because you don't want to be emotional. Right. I didn't, I wanted it to be a true response right. and not just that, oh, the music did that. And so mm-hmm. now here I go. And, um, and so I did, I felt myself holding back and it, it wasn't godly and it was mm-hmm. very difficult. It was a difficult season. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but the Lord really helped me to see some things in there. So emotionalism pursues feelings as an end in themselves. It's wanting to feel something with no regard for how that feeling is produced or its ultimate purpose. All, Emotionalism can also view heightened emotions as the infallible sign that God is present. Mm -hmm. In contrast, the emotions that singing is meant to evoke are a response to who God is and what he's done. Vibrant singing enables us to combine truth about God seamlessly with passion for God doctrine and devotion, mind and heart. Mm. And doesn't he deserve it all? Right. He deserves it all. And so when we come, it let's not hold back. And I'm not saying, oh, if you're not raising your hands, you're not worshiping. If you're not the loudest person, you're not worshiping. But we are saying, or I am saying that he does deserve our whole hearted Mm. response. And I just wanted to just to quickly say, um, uh, Bob Coughlin kind of gives three, four points actually of how music helps us. And I I did, I had to re-encourage myself (laughs) on how music Mm -hmm. helps us. And so this was so good. So when music stirs up and expresses God glorifying emotion, that's a good thing. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the second thing, music helps us reflect the glory and activity of the triune God. The third thing, music helps us remember truth about God. If our music is biblically based and we are singing the word of God is helping us remember Mm -hmm. the truth of God. And lastly, music helps us express our unity in the gospel. And that is so beautiful, Mm -hmm. especially when we're talking corporately, (laughs) when we come together with other believers and we are singing in unity, worshiping together, Mm -hmm. there's so much strength in there. So much strength. And a lot of this you know, comes from our background and how, and now, you know, some weren't raised in church, many were not, but if you were, and you were raised in a very, um, uh, quiet worship music setting, as opposed to maybe someone more of a Pentecostal, vibrant, loud, very emotional setting, it, it is different. And, and we all come from a different perspective. And so then looking at it and saying, what does the Bible actually say about this? That is my background. Is that very charismatic, very emotional? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, I embraced that a hundred percent. Right. And I loved it. Same, same. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm super thankful for my, the roots and how God raised me. I'm super thankful. So much that I learned, so so much was good, Um, but coming from that perspective. And then when you learn truth and you, and you see some of the errors, just like you, I did the same thing where I, I was thinking, you know, I don't want any emotion in that. The pendulum swung. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in reality, God gave us emotions yeah. and we are supposed to feel uh, emotions. And when we're singing and when we have that deep like we're, you were saying in the last podcast, and we have that revelation of who God is, we learn in the word, then we're going to respond in mm-hmm. worship. And so usually you feel something when you love someone, you have some emotion that goes along with that. Uh, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. I'm I have a real lot of excited <laughs> for our next one Me to too. dive in yeah. and even talk a little bit even more about emotionalism yeah. and so many other things in our next couple podcast. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us again. We hope that this was helpful. We hope that you 
either had your Bible open or if you have questions, concerns that you go to your Bible and you read the word for yourself. Uh, the Lord is faithful, yes. right? He is present. He is with us and he, his spirit leads and guides us in all things. And sometimes it's a season yeah, that we work through things, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but he is always so faithful. So ladies, we hope you have a wonderful day and we look forward to you joining back next time. 